Hello everyone, welcome to day number two of the Super Bet Rapid and Blitz in Poland. And uh, in this game, we will feature Wesley's win over Duda. Wesley sacrificed his bishop on F2 to win the game. Let's start. Duda was white. He played E4. Wesley went for E5. Knight C6. Bishop B5. Knight F6. Another Berlin. Yesterday, Wesley won a Berlin game against Shevchenko. So if ink broke, why fix? Alright. Keep the Berlin going. D3, the anti-Berlin. The main line of the Berlin is to castle and then knight takes e4. We will have d4 here. Knight into d6. This is typical. Takes on c6, takes, takes on e5, knight f5, takes on d8, king takes d8. This is the normal line of the Berlin. The anti-Berlin. Duda doesn't want to go into the main line, so he went for d3, bishop c5. Now with bishop c5, this is more or less like uh, the Italian type of game here. c3, d5. Okay. Centralizing the pawn straight away. With that attack on the e4. Takes in d5, queen takes d5. Bishop goes back to c4, queen d6. White delays casting. He played knight bd2, castles. b4, bishop b6. White goes for a4. White wants to trap Wesley's bishop on b6. But Wesley was ready. He went for bishop f5. This is still a line. And Duda actually provoked Wesley for the sacrifice. He played a5. This is a novelty. Previously, Caruana went for bishop a3 against Aronian and went on to win the game. After that, there's e4, takes on e4, takes, exchange of the queen, and Caruana castled on the queen side with his pawn majority 3 versus 2 after the capture on d6 yep white went on to win the end game but duda wants to see what's in store here so he played a5 bishop takes f2 maybe this is part of his preparation and the uh, candidates so he he wants to see what's gonna happen if he plays a5 he just wants to see the danger i guess but Wesley was ready bishop takes an f2 takes on d3 the compensation black gets two pawns attack on c3 another pawn is gonna fall because if you play bishop b2 here white goes for e4 threatening e3 attacking the knight on d2 so duda went for queen e2 takes on c3 three pawns for the minor piece plus b4 is hanging so it's gonna be four pawns after rook a3, Wesley went for queen b4. Even if you play rook b1 here, black can still capture the pawn on b4 with the knight. So it's four pawns against the minor piece. So basically, it's one pawn up for black. If we go into the value of the pieces. So rook a3, queen takes b4, queen c4, e4. Alright, the pass pawn, the central pass pawn. Attacking the knight. On f3, Duda countered with knight e5. Of course, you cannot capture on e5 because the knight is protecting your queen on b4. But Wesley also has his own counterplay with rook ad8. White cannot take the knight on c6 because of rook takes d2, removing the defender on c4. So, not possible. So, Duda had to capture the queen. Knight takes b4. Knight dc4. Connecting the two knights. Wesley here play rook f e8. Uh, with this one, I, I'd like black to play knight d5, also connecting his own knight. Plus threatening f6 to disconnect white's knight. But Wesley has other plans. 
he centralized his two rooks rook f8 and rook ad8 bishop into g5 rook to d4 the main point of rook d4 is that if bishop takes f6 g takes f6 you're attacking this rook attacks c4 so bishop into e3 knight g4 takes takes all right white took on a7 maybe the decisive mistake is after that f9 d3 and then f5 connected pawns yeah. pawn phalanx massive pawns right the pawn mass here white played rook b1 and west the just so alert and played c5 a strong move restricting the bishop yeah an interference blocking the way of the bishop on the e3 square so the knight cannot move back to e3 as well because if you play knight e3 there's f4 right hitting the knight then e2 e1 king is also restricted he cannot go back to f2 and here it's not possible of course to play f takes g4 because rook takes b7 the bishop is eyeing on e3 rook is eyeing on your knight and white has this pass pawn on the a5 c5 very precise here by wesley without a doubt all right playing without a doubt e3 pass pawn must be pushed the knight cannot capture that pawn on e3 because it's going to be a check Rook takes away the 4th rank, Knight takes away f2, game over. So Duda had to play Knight h6 to break black structure, but doesn't matter, just take. Rook takes d3, e2. How can you stop the pawn? The Rook can stop the pawn, but black gets the exchange in the end. First was the sacrifice on f2, and in the end, Wesley gains the exchange. Rook to d5, the rest here is just a matter of technique. Rook into e3. Going into a staircase. Rook a3, threatening rook c2 and rook a1 mate. Forcing white to exchange his rook. Takes, takes. Of course, the rook is superior than the bishop. Plus an extra pawn. Although it's, it's not so easy, the, the conversion here is not so easy. It will take some patience. King g7, rook a4, cutting off the king. Rook a3, h5, nice. Bishop e3, king f6, activating the king. King e6. Again, the white's king is being cut off. Bishop to b8, king d5 h3 king e4 active king bishop c7 wesley's target is this g2 pawn will he find a way bishop b8 rook c8 rook into c1 although it was also possible for black here to go for f4 i don't know why he was worried he went for rook c1 rook c7 first and now rook c2 the king is restricted on the second from the restriction on the fourth third now the second you only have one line left for the king king into f4 threatening king g3 attack on g2 or c1 bishop f2 rook c1 okay, rook to b1 h6 rook b2 Okay, the main point of h6 is that if the bishop moves back to f2, okay, one more move, rook a1, I guess, and then if bishop h4, then rook a2, king goes to f1, king e3, the pawn prevents bishop g5 check. Right. So that's also the main point of h6. So king f2, rook b2 check, king g1, king e3. Again, no bishop g5. Prophylaxis, yeah, prophylactic h6 move. King into h1, finally, king e2. Rook check, and home run for the king. Target 
g2 pawn and h5 pawn and f5 stop to g4 rook is coming to b2 bishop f6 stops rook b2 attack the bishop first attack the bishop and then on e2 king to g3 nice one h4 takes king takes g2 nice thing. after bishop takes h6 rook e4 and here white resigned again if the king moves either g5 or h5 the pawn will just push on f4 king f5 nothing can stop the pawn the unstoppable promotion on f1 and it's still a win that was a brilliant win by wesley okay thanks to duda for playing that a5 move provoking wesley to to sacrifice an f2 and uh, in in return wesley had four pawns for that piece and it was just too much all right it was it's still added leading the race after winning five straight games and a draw in the last game there will be three more games tomorrow so three days of rapid after the rapid will be the blitz 18 rounds of blitz so it's Anand with five and a half out of six leading the super bet rapid and blitz in poland but wesley is not far behind so guys who will continue to cover the grand chess tour super bet rapid and blitz in poland in the days to come and also watch out for the sharjah masters round number one tomorrow i will be playing in the Sharjah Masters, there are about 60 plus Grand Masters playing, yeah, out of 80 participants. So it's a tough event, and hopefully, I'll be able to get my final norm. We're just hoping, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we will also cover that one for you guys. Okay, thank you for watching, and thank you for supporting our channel, Charles Max Chess and Charles Max Entertainment, on Facebook and YouTube. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.